What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to introduce you to our guest today. She is a two-time international award-winning author, motivational speaker, humanitarian, and women's advocate, Natalie Rostokian. Natalie spent nearly two decades as an actress, live TV show host, and radio host in the Lebanese and Arabic society. 11 years ago, Natalie left her whole life behind and followed her heart and moved to Canada. Natalie is the first female public figure from Lebanon and the Arab world to break her cultural change to publish an English novel in the West. Welcome, Natalie. I'm so honored to have you here on the show today. Oh my God, I am so honored to be with you, Jennifer, because every word that you're saying, it's coming from your heart and you're just putting your soul and your positivity and the pride that every woman should have out there and applaud to each other. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you, Natalie. And first and foremost, congratulations on the success of your book entitled Mass. <laughs> I personally loved it, devoured it. So tell me, your book is based on true life events. Some yeah. may even say a few controversial events. In it, you share about your upbringing in Lebanon, your Armenian heritage, your rise to stardom, love, and loss. What takeaway do you hope your readers receive from your book? It depends every reader what they're looking for. I would like to say, first of all, it's for women, but it's for every woman because every character in the book, every voice in the book, I'm sure 100% that it will be, uh, it will be touching someone's life. But only women, I'm not talking about men with all my respect to men, because every woman is a housewife, someone is a mother, someone dreams of a life of fame, another one has taboos in life, another one has struggles. So I think that what I want, they will choose how the book will touch them, because it's an indirectly inspiration of coaching that when you have a life and you have to overcome and rise over your own pain, you coach people with stories and not like categorize and putting out rules and teaching them according to what you have learned, but what you have been through and what you have seen. So I think that I will let my readers as women to find their own inspiration because it's about all of us. And as a woman, I wrote as a woman, I wrote as a wife, I wrote as a previous celebrity in Lebanon, I wrote as a woman in love, a woman who saw betrayal, a woman who betrayed, a woman who wanted to betray, a woman who wanted fame, who wanted to, a woman who gave things up and why she went through stuff like rape. She went through stuff like uh, pain and sexual assault and, and literary things. But it's not about people who are dreaming of literary life. They have to know this. No, for each and every woman, there's a window in this book in masks that they will open in their own way when they open the first page and start reading. That's how I think from my readers. <laughs> 
I hope I, I agree with the right answer. It's your answer. So it's a, it's a beautiful, correct answer. And I agree with you. I felt the, the book very inspiring. I, you brought me through every emotion from happy to sad to saucy romance to, yeah. <laughs> you know, the starlight and, and so much and family and, and love. It was all so important. I, I think it's a great book. I think it's very inspirational. And congratulations again, two-time international award winning. That just, how does that, you know, go back for you and your family now? Because I know in your book, you spoke quite heavily of your family. How does your family view your success with the book? Honestly, I mean, my husband, he didn't believe that I could get a, I could get even one award. He's like, okay, she's writing the book. But on it, uh, but from the other side, I mean, some family members, they were not quite very happy with the situation that a lot of taboos were coming out and I was talking about them. But I didn't talk about the taboos in order to be saying that this is like this and this is like that. No, because it's psychoanalysis. It's some kind of therapy and it's some kind of a connection. And I being the bridge, the first one to do it, I was doing psychoanalysis for myself. I was judging myself and I was just trying to overcome these challenges. That's why I changed all the names, even though it was based on true life events. So I might say that my husband and a couple of my family members, like my auntie, my cousins, they are so happy. They're so proud. But another part of the family, closest members of my family aren't quite very happy or they did not, let's say, hashtag kudos to the idea, but I respect them because this is their point of view and they live in society. Probably this is not because they don't love me. We cannot expect from people to love us or to appreciate it or to do things the way that we want them to. So I respect their opinion. And I also say thank you to my wonderful husband and my cousins and his cousin and my husband and his love of my life that he supports me, you know, no matter what that's the most important thing and there is something deeper that is not important it's the core of everything I do in my life it's my own opinion about myself my opinion about Natalie my opinion about myself will be the most important thing because I cannot stop at every point path in my life and wait for opinion of others. It is amazing when you get an award and then you get a second award and you're shocked because I'm writing in my fourth language and people are like, wow, it's getting five stars. I'm like, oh my God, I got a gold award and golden award, golden award, 60,000 books. But uh, the thing is that how do I feel? Because I have to see within myself my emotions and I judge myself and I applaud to myself and I have learned this to do with time because I had to fight my own battles my whole life not because I was a victim but because I had dreams and I had goals and I never give up and so that's why I cherish people who applaud me who stand by my side but I also respect others opinion but I don't base my joy on the applaud of people when they don't understand me because they understand me their way that's their opinion and that's it I understand and so in the book it is based on true life events with a little bit of fiction put in there you you mentioned to me if you had to do it all over again would you choose the same path yes whoa of course oh my god this is an amazing uh, question of course I would have chosen the same path because if I wouldn't have chosen the path of being on TV okay trying to break the rules I was born Armenian I spoke Armenian and uh, Arabic was my third language so I had a lot of problems in pronunciation in order to be on television to be uh, on platforms because it was hard for me even though you learn the language you're born there but the pronunciation is different. So I am very happy because I can never look back to the younger version of Natalie Restokian and I say, what if you try to do this? I had never had what ifs in my life. That's why whatever I did, I'm so happy that I did, even though it went through a lot of painful situations. I was like, oh my God, I give up. I cried a lot. And sometimes I I break down, you know, and I cry till today, you know, it just gives me like, oh my God, that's it. That's the end of the world. And then I come back like, no, no, I'm strong. I can do this. No, I can do this. So this thing, it's like, I don't have regrets because I sit down a lot of people, Jennifer, and I I see like, yeah, when I was 20, I was thinking like doing this, but it didn't work because of that. I gave up a lot of things in order not to have the answer to that. But I didn't even know that it was some kind of a path because I was like, okay, I have to do this. I want to do this. I go and step over things in order to get this. I step a lot on my soul or my spirit, but I do it all over again because that made me an award-winning author today that made me inspired because I wouldn't have 
given to women out there to say, you know what? If you have an accent in your language, it's okay. You can do it. Racism, it's not about the color only. No, 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 no. Even if you come from another culture, there is racism. There is racism not among races. There is this inferiority complex between men and women till today. And that's what we should realize. There is no racism between Middle East and here, United States and Canada and Europe. No, there is racism. The bridge that they try to break do to divide women apart because they know that we have so much in common more than we realize. That's why people like you who are reading my book, who are promoting and loving it, this is my answer. And we should just open our eyes and see what's happening. And that's why I say, I say, there is no, for me, crisis of colors, race, religion. No, 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 no. It's the superiority and inferiority complex, men and women, and it's everywhere. She's like, oh my God, she's a woman. Oh my God, she's like, are you kidding me? We're in the 21st century. Speaking of which, being in the 21st century, the preface of your book, I found was very powerful. It was a powerful statement. If it's okay with you, I'd like to read it to our audience. It reads, society, tradition, religion, all dictating rules, urging you to wear a mask, repressing your strength, courage, passion. Emerge from the crowd and surround yourself with the few who know your true face. Remove the mask and taste freedom. Remove it for a chance at absolute happiness. I find this to be a very powerful statement. Do you feel the parallels between your book and what's been going on within our world the last year or so now? That statement is so poignant to your book and to your story. And I find it so poignant to what's going on in our world right now. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength and tone your body from head to toe? Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days, you will feel a difference. In 14 days, you will see a difference. And in eight weeks, you will have your new Pilates body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. Uh, I agree with you totally, Jennifer, because I think that when I wrote that, I wrote that based upon my own feelings and how I see the world from my point of view, because I had to wear masks in order to satisfy others, in order to do this, in order to do that. And when you write today and you say it's very parallel with what we're going today in the States, in Canada, in the whole world, and even in Armenia, when a couple of months ago, the, the war was there and the whole media was silent, the social media, they didn't even talk about nagorno karabakh Artsakh, they bombed with a uh, nuclear weapon uh, with weapon like uh, white phosphorus, c- unarmed civilians. Why? Because people want to wear masks. And this is not only for now, today. It means that humanity decides all the time when they want something and they want to hide, they choose to wear masks. And it has been happening from the beginning of time. But how do we put it out there? How do we see it? It's our own responsibility because if I come up and stand up and I say, you know, I had done a mistake. I don't want to lie anymore. And I put everything in front of the world and I say, you know, I have done this, this, this. I'm judging myself. Then no one will have anything to use against me because I will have no fear. The fear does not come because you're courageous because, uh, no, excuse me, the, the courage does not come because I have no fear from anything. No, it comes when you have the ability to accept that you are wearing the mask because sometimes we are like robots. We are like brainwashed. We don't even know. Like they say something, we go. Elect this person, they do. Do this, do this. Wear mask, wear mask. There is no social media. You don't talk about this. I mean, the fear is going on for a long time, even this last year and people are repeating things and the social media things are happening in a, in a very scary way that we're just 
scared. And we are scared because I go back like to the times of witches of Salem. Like when you say something which is not right, they are going to judge you. But the social media should not be like that. Social media should say, should say the truth because there is your story, my story, and the truth. But the truth is not the way to scare people. And the last year has not only been the, the first time that it resonates with my story of masks. It has been for years and years and years. I go back. I say, oh my God. I mean, I come from a family where my grandpa had survived the Armenian genocide 1915. And till today, except a couple of countries, I think 19 to 29 countries maybe, except the genocide, the rest did not. And I say, why are you wearing masks? There are proofs. There are videos. There are stories. My grandpa, but they choose to wear the masks. Some for power, other for oil and money. Some because they are scared. But uh, I think that once you remove the mask, there is a price you pay. <laughs> I paid very big prices for a lot of things. But you will free courageous because no one can use anything against you. I agree 100%. It was very well articulated. Yeah, it's very much so. So <laughs> in, in speaking about all of this, we have another huge congratulations for you with your new TV show and <laughs> I Poop Pen in yeah, Cyprus. So tell our audience about it and I want to hear more on all the details. I'm so happy for you that you're getting back in television and I know this because means this so much to you. This is what I'm doing now. It's like that now I'm writing my second novel of masks. It's the story of Anna, what happens again. And she goes into new adventures in her life as I go because Anna is my higher self is my higher voice, is is my soldier as I'm the general, you know, and I say, Anna, go attack in my book, you know. So I plan is I'm doing this show uh, weekly every Saturday and it's somehow bringing the voice of all Armenians from a lot around the world and showing that that it's okay, there is humanity and I'm doing this job giving back to my nation and to my country, to my people, to all Armenians around the world, in Artsakh nagorno who the heroes that they died and they were martyred and uh, in uh, September, and all around the world, just to bring personalities, Armenian, who survived the genocide and things are going on and we do not give up and we continue our lives. And uh, I introduce them to the world because when we bring hope, when we bring joy, when we bring ideas through our programs to people who are like at the edge of losing their faith in humanity, I think that it might touch their souls somehow. And I hope that I am touching uh, thousands of souls because this is my obligation towards my Armenian nation who had chosen to be, I was not chosen to born Armenian, but I'm proud to be Armenian. And it, it gives me so much, uh, Jennifer, satisfaction to see that I'm able to give them something without expectation, because it's like, you know, it satisfies my soul. It's like, you know, widows there and things there, but it's okay. We have to go on. We have to do something. And imagine today you're talking about it. It's like, see, this is a blessing. This is a sign from God that it's not about nation. It's not about who we are. It's about humanity. And you are a living uh, proof of what it means to be kindness and deeping, uh, to be deep, going diving into the soul of every woman and encouraging us to be who we are. You are a living example. Oh, thank you. Well, I am in good company with you, my dear. That's Aww. for sure. <laughs> it takes one to know one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So tell me, is there one moment in your life that you are so proud of that you'd like to share with us? Yes. It was the moment of my book launch when uh, there was this second when they said the award-winning book, Natalie Restokian. I'm like, oh my God, in Canada? I mean, I left everything behind. I came here to make a family. Now I have a book. I'm an award-winning author and they're saying my name. It was like, <gasps> I was like, <gasps> you know, like, and, and I forgot myself. And, and I, I like my book is like this. And I'm like, yes, 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 it's in the video. <laughs> And at that moment, I just felt that it's not about, it's not about what we do. It's how 
really, really how authentic we are. We have to be very careful with the words we use because we can use the word authentic. We can use the word like a very inspiring idea, organic, but truly, are we authentic? Are we? So when they did this uh, book launch for me, organized by a Lebanese community and Canadians, and they did this, at that moment when they said my name, it was so different, you know? I just came here a couple of years ago and suddenly my destiny changes and I become an award-winning author. And it's it gave me, this joy, inner joy that I'm now touching the soul of people who never knew me, but they are so proud of me. You know, it's amazing. So very proud of you. And I can't encourage everyone enough to go out and grab your book, The Math, and to be along for the journey of your story is so inspiring to all women out there. What you've been through in your life between your upgrowing and your multifaceted career. Is there one piece of advice being a woman's advocate that you'd like to offer women? There are a lot of things I could say, but the most important thing, try to find who you are and don't stop working on yourself. Because the most important thing is not to expect expect anything from life. Life is going to be unjust. Life is going to be painful if you want to follow your goals. But don't sit and dream. Get a goal. If that goal doesn't work, it's okay. Take something from there and choose something else. Because it's the perseverance that keeps you alive. And there is no word which is called faith. There is no failure. Failure is when you don't have inner peace. And I have learned this through life that the most important thing is to have gratitude towards yourselves and believe that you are a woman for a reason because we are the most amazing creation on earth with all my respect to men and everything else in the world, which living things in the world. We have so much to give. So don't fear of identity crisis. Don't fear that the goal you did not attain will destroy you it will not be brave enough don't listen to anybody don't listen people will crush you not because they hate you because that's how much they know don't stop at what they say go it doesn't work it's not given try something else the motivation of always having different things doing in your life and even not doing even sitting and having a cup of coffee if that's what you want it's between you and yourself what makes you happy what makes you find your inner peace, that's what matters. No one else matters in the world. Be yourself. That's beautiful, Natalie. That is truly beautiful. I couldn't have said it better. It just came into my mind, you know, because I was just like, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I mean, if you say, because you're not going to make anybody happy. So don't stop. Don't listen to anyone. Because a lot of times people give their opinion, not because they hate us. I mean, you might see from a person close to you, like saying, uh, it's like, okay, you, they just, they don't mimic you. They don't laugh at you. They just don't know what you feel. And they cannot play that role in your life. So don't expect anything from anyone. It's fine. It's fine if they don't love you for what you do. You're not going to be loved by everyone. I'm not loved by everyone. And thank God, I don't care because I don't love everyone. And I'm not the perfect person. But I don't make effort to be loved. I am who I am. And this is me. If you love me, if you want to know what it is to be a woman like me, don't look at me. You are a woman yourself. Look at you because you are so blessed and you are so powerful that once you seek within yourself, you will see. So we're at that time in the show, Natalie, where I give that special question. What would you like your legacy to be? My legacy is when I leave this world, I want people to say, you know what? Don't wear a mask. Like that girl, I don't know where she came from, somewhere from Middle East, Armenia, something they shared like that, the, 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 the thing uh, about the mask, don't, don't wear it. That's it. Don't wear masks. Be yourself. That's my legacy. If they can use that word, even not remembering my name, where I come from and who I was, just knowing the concepts of being embraced by two people who know you for yourself, just using that phrase, that's enough for me as a legacy because it means that I have changed life even when I'm gone from this world. That's beautiful. Love it's it. It's good. It's good. It's good. I love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> of course it's good. It's your legacy. It's perfect. It's perfect for you. <laughs> So I know we've talked about a few things that are coming up next for you. So you're working on another book. Now, is this going to be part of, shall we call this a series now? I hope so. I hope so. It becomes a TV series. I hope so. I'm just expecting pitch from any producer because I have the, all the rights for it. It's a, it's all audiobook. Amazon already uh, made it into an audiobook. So uh, it's an audiobook by Nicole Renee. She's an amazing guy. Uh, she's an amazing narrator. But this one, yes, of course, because now why did I stop a little bit? 
writing, I'm in the middle of the story because when I went to Lebanon a year and a half ago before, before this COVID thing, a lot of women approached me and they told me their stories that I could you put this in your second book? And I wrote it down. It was so sad. It was so sad, Jennifer. They came to me and they told me their story because they saw what I posted on Facebook that they, they don't know me. They saw me at my hairdresser, like, and you are the one. Oh my God, we saw it. And I'm like, okay. I promise me that you're going to end. It's so painful. So I have this vocation. It's a burden, but at the same time, it's a blessing. It's scary, but at the same time, I am blessed to be their voice. So I am continuing and it's definitely should be on the screen, not because I wrote it, but because for once we have to open the doors to show to the world honestly and truly how women are there living and what is wrong and what is right to bring them together. Because what I see on TV with all my respect and what I see on screens it's so scary and we as human beings are scared from things that we don't know and this is the difference I mean I had somebody saying to me in an interview okay dear do you drive a car I said yeah I had the driver oh you had a driver so you as a woman you don't drive so it's it's about education it's about of course it is glitterati story like Anna she becomes famous with what she goes through and stuff but at the same time when you know who they are over there and that part of the world the way that it's truly is not the way they want for the rest of the world to see in order to be scared and to leave us alone and not to hold our hand as women as you do today to me we should break that chain and say no more that's why I pray and I ask from the Lord that it could be adapted into a series as my second novel is also the continuation because a lot of more characters a lot of more adventures are coming voices of so many women who are scared to talk so I will talk and I will say say in their place because they are scared to lose things in their lives i respect it and i feel like i am blessed and it's a responsibility so yeah the second one is a series i mean the continuation hope to see it on the screen <laughs> i would love to see the first one on the screen that would be amazing and a television show I hadn't thought about that but it would make an incredible steamy steamy <laughs> show Woo. But I'm not giving out any details you must go and read your eyes i'm looking into your oh. eyes Remember, like, every time stuff. you read it, like you tell me, yeah. oh, this part, nothing. I'm, oh my God, Jennifer is so driven and she's so much in the story. It, it was like shocking for me that I was. And, and that's what, you know, this is, this is a sign. This is a sign. We women, wherever we are around the world, whatever color we have, whatever religion we believe in and whoever we pray to and whoever we're married to and society, whatever, we have most important thing that we are women and we are created from inside the same way. And today you are proving to your audience, to whom I say a lot of hellos to the States. And I love you guys. You're amazing. Thank you for the two awards you gave me from Washington and Los Angeles. You're amazing. Thank you. And all around the world, women and I say that you are a living breathing example once again I have to say this that we have the same things a lot and we should come together not by pain by strength amen that was beautiful well thank you so much Natalie for being here today for sharing your journey your energies I can't thank you enough where can our listeners find you connect with you grab your book let us know okay so the book it's masks and it's by my name Natalie Restokian and you can find my book online on Amazon. Also, you have the Audible, Amazon also. Social media, what is your signs as far as on Instagram? I know you're my, on Instagram. My name is everywhere. Everywhere I sign in on Facebook, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. I have the same name, Natalie. Natalie Restokian. Thank you again, Natalie. This has been such an I honor. Thank you. I've had so much fun connecting with you on and off air. I can't thank you enough. I want to thank you, Jennifer, for this amazing and wonderful program. Most importantly, to have an amazing person like you who is, who is encouraging and inspiring the world and women to be themselves. You're an awesome person and it was an honor for me to be with you. I know that people who will listen to you not only be inspired, but you will touch their souls and they will let them overcome a lot of things that they think they could not. You are a strong woman and a kind woman and I'm very grateful and honored to be with you and your wonderful audience in the States and all around the world, Canada, Europe, wherever they're watching us. Many hugs to you from Canada to uh, United States, LA, right? You're in LA. Florida. I'm in Florida, Florida today. Florida, yeah, I forgot I'm in Florida today. That's all right. Well, many oh. hugs to you as well. And until next time. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.